time, the whole system collapses. It must be a fragile system if it were. filter and heat exchange system. Perspiration passes through the first layer and is gathered in the second. The salt is separated. Breathing and walking provide the pumping action. spread to all the Dravidium in the planet. Mars will go into global meltdown. That's why the aliens never turned it on. I'm super excited, especially after last night's broadcast. Obviously, as everyone knows, I'm present, and that allows me to be just that much more in tune with everything that we're experiencing. And honestly, I've been in the studio, like always, just running around and getting stuff moved around and, and ready to not only get to this next level of explaining to people and showing to people and giving in individuals the experience of what this expansion is really about and what it can do for you. Um, <laughs> but I always I seem to have open-ended statements these days. It's like I don't have buts anymore. So what I want to do today is that I want to show people just a few things of, uh, uh, in related to what we're going to be doing and uh, how we're going to be bringing out this information because some people would say, well, well, I get the whole thing. I understand what you're trying to do, but how is all this going to come about? Because, you know, everyone else is trying to do that too and they haven't been as successful maybe. Um, but I think that we've been all working collectively and everyone is doing their part and then as long as you show up and give, and give your special gift and talent uh, to this process of our awakening, then it all ends up balancing out. So I want to give credit to everyone that has been working on expanding consciousness in this world one way or another. And um, I'm looking here. And just allowing even me, a person myself, like I, I've read some of David Icke's works. I've read some of uh, uh, Michael Tassarian's works. I've read Dan Winter's stuff. I've read Jordan Maxwell's stuff. I've read all these individual stuff. And what happens is as human beings, we are constantly improving on everything. Like, that's what we do. We're like, we're busy bees in that way. We're constantly going from one place to another, trying to enhance whatever it is the previous representation and presentation of it is. For those who may not agree completely with what I'm talking about, which is fine, that means you can always enhance 
you can enhance it. And then what I want to do is I want to give you all the tools that are necessary for you to enhance it. I'm not going to be sitting back here like, no, I'm the only one and I'm the chosen. And it's way too much of a load to be trying to carry it on your own. So um, I really want to say that also sometimes I'm very critical of other ind individuals in the industry because I see myself at least on that same plane as they are. And so as an individual that can interject and say, hey, I challenge you, get, you guys need to whip it up a little bit, get it going a little bit. And it's because that that's what I would expect someone to do uh, to me and for me. And, and that's also what transparency gets you into is because it doesn't matter what a person says or what a person does. As long as you've been transparent, then it allows you to be able to, um, you know, not have these um, drawbacks to your character or drawbacks to, to what you're doing. Because some people are saying, yeah, he's good at this, but, and then there's this huge, he does this, he says this, you know, and so when you're transparent, that doesn't occur. And so, um, again, to all those who have bought information prior to this, even the, the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas and whoever, this is what we're, as a faction, building on top of. I'll say, meaning that we see that as our foundation and then we see it also as something that we can innovate and improve. And this is the big key because you have to realize that what created all these different stages of different individuals bringing certain levels of knowledge was someone new coming out there and saying, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying with the whole expanded thing and maybe even God, but I don't think God is out there. I think this being is more of in here and I think there should be more of an introspection. So that's an improvement. And so if we're you know, in the, let's say if you're in a Model T, you got a Model T outside. Actually, if you got one, then you're rich. But you know how it works. If you got a Hyundai outside and it's from 1975, more than likely it's about to give out and about to go, right? But if you have this, let's say, Bugatti Veyron outside, then it's just fresh. It's brand new. And what I'm bringing up here is simply this, that we constantly innovate and change things. We did it to the cars, we did it to the computer, we did it to the communication, we do it to everything. But why can we not do it to spirituality? Why are we still on stuff that's 4,000, 10,000, 15,000 years old and even proving itself not to be accurate when we can just look at what we're experiencing and what's going on inside and then be, let that be our Bible, let that be our holy book. And this is, uh, and this is what your, this, this is your temple. This is your, your church. This is your home. It's all here. But if you don't know what's here, then home is not where the heart is. Meaning that if you don't know what, what's going on with your body, your chakras, your spirit, and all these different things, then you're not at home inside yourself. It forces you to go out and live vicariously or, uh, or, or like a voyeur through other life forms. And this is accomplished, of course, with the tube or the TV. Notice they call it a tube. And we unlocked last night that the one is really a tube, right? So this tube that is a portal, which is the TV, you can choose to dive into, right? And then start to vicariously live through the role that's being depicted on the TV, whether it's a movie, whether it's a documentary, whatever. So this is another thing that the individuals in the Western world do have somewhat of an advantage on with others that are not deep into the voyeurism is that when you're capable of doing that, you're also able to simulate, meaning you're actually able to say, well, what if the world continues like this? What if I still stay in this hardened state of mind where uh, my religion is the only religion and that anyone else doing something wrong must, be, must perish and I stay in that state of mind? Like with, with a voyeur, a voyeur can come out of that state of mind and say, but what happens if I don't think like that? Where will I start to expand to if I begin to realize that everything is all connected and I just have a, a small part or a small link of a very, very big chain? And so what happens is, is that this is the next step to things then because this is when we start breaching into, as I mentioned, what many greats were attempting to accomplish here on this planet, which was the collapsing of time. That means the point where you no longer actually consider time. Notice how when you start talking about the end of time, it strikes fear in most people, right? Because they think already that time is running out. But to an omniscient, immortal, even beyond immortal kind of being, 
when you're talking about the end of something, that doesn't even really make sense. It really sounds like a shower, meaning a point where you're going to go and renew things and then come back even more expanded than you were before. So when we're talking about the end of time, we're not talking about, per se, the end of the world, which people connect that into. They connect that if time doesn't exist, then the world doesn't exist. The idea of what the world is now doesn't exist. You're right. So all the way that you see things going on now, it won't be going on like that anymore because people will know they have infinite, infinite amount of, of, of time in a tense, with no more time to have their experiences. So thus, they're not rushing over things and they're not, in, they're not in f afraid that they're not going to be able to do something or that they'll never be able to right or wrong, etc. So this gets into where everyone becomes more optimistic because pessimistic is basically over 40, over 50. The person starts, uh, and these new people coming out, they're destroying everything, and there becomes this pessimistic attitude. And then as the, the older, lower frequencies and the primordial states of consciousness begin to, in a tense, drag you down, down to the foundation of everything and allow you to take your place amongst the sediment and uh, as they say dust to dust there are those who have more expanded states of consciousness the consciousness where they can metamorphosize themselves into beings by holding on to truth and becoming true that are, are exempt from things like gravity time fear all of these kind of things and it's and it's going to really happen so watch this it's already happening with the with groups of people but it's going to happen even more in a more expanded level what i did agree to do today though because we're in no rush after all we don't have time is i'm going to show last night's video because i feel like last night's video i even started listening to it again because i was uh re-editing and uploading it just for, so we can see it today on uh, on the show and i started listening to it because it was running and i was like man it was moving at many points and i realized that you know, rather than going and pouring on another layer right now, why things are still drying and cooling, because I have a lot of imagery and I have a lot of things to show in relation to what I was talking about last night, I think it's best for us all to catch up, because I know some people weren't present for that conversation. I think it's all best to be on the same page so that when we go into the next thing, it makes sense. And here's another thing, like I talked about last night, about dumbing this thing down. Or actually, I think I talked about that on Friday, but dumbing this thing down uh, on the Kata Gaia show, for other people to actually understand it. Remember, that is not how you actually learn things. When you're trying to learn something, you actually listen to it, you don't fully comprehend it, but as you stick with it, then you start to realize what's going on. If someone is saying something to you very basic, though, that's just a continuous repetitious of, hey, we're all in trouble, hey, there's danger, hey, they're destroying the planet, and those things you understand because they're just simple syntax, like it's just simple sentences that you can comprehend. If a person keeps saying that over and over again, then we got an issue, we got a problem, because that's not a teacher. What are they teaching? You already know that. To teach you something that you don't know is to begin to explain to you things that you may never heard. But using some kind of, um, uh, let's see how, how we'll call it, but using something that allows you to be able to um, distinguish, discern what you're looking at without the opinion of the person that's speaking. Meaning you don't have to take my opinion and my word for it as fact. You can use the as above, so below, micro macro approach that we all use to determine if something is true or false. And this is very important, though, because this means that none of this knowledge is really contingent upon me. Enough has been really released even by last night. We, we attempt to do that every show. So this is obviously the Resistance website. If you haven't been there, it's www.resistance2010.com. Okay? And I just posted something this morning, which was this article. It's called Soul Wars, the Documents That End Spiritual Deception. Okay? And what you will find in the first two publications of this documentation, which I'll click on here, you can also find this on my page on Facebook, is the documents that begin unhinging much of what people believe is going on, especially related, related to spirituality, okay? And I believe that these are important documents to start off with, not because some of us haven't heard this before, but because many of us don't have the actual details. You don't have the, the Wikipedia version of how to get people to the knowledge of how they're, why they're believing what they believe in, especially with the Christ myth, especially with the Scientology, especially with the UN, and especially with all these different factions, that how these people 
can cook up a good one, meaning that they actually know how to tell stories and to deal with science fiction and to begin to deal with the mind. That's why they are part owners of DreamWorks, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the company that, that puts out those, those movies. They are owners of Disney. They're owners of the companies that basically deal with controlling the mind through fantasy, but more of phantasmagoria. It's basically your truth with a deceptive twist and an unfortunate end. That's generally much of the movies. And so, of course, people feed off this now. And what I mean by that is, is that notice how in a person that works out can, can really tune into this a little bit more. But notice how when it's time to really work out, right, when it's time to really grind out in the gym, then you got to turn on some rock or some rap. You got to turn on the R's, okay? And that's why this R-rated movies, because that R really does mean something. It's a, a way that the shadow is cast on the tetrahedron when it's shined against the wall. So when that R, when the person needs that R, which is basically the beginning of the reptilian, <laughs> that R strength, okay? They turn on this hardcore rock slash kill slash murder everything, right? And that's what they use to get energy so that they can lift those weights, right? Hmm. So what's really going on then with the human being? Is the human being more or less tuned or tapped in when it's time to get their energy or power into negativity? And that's why we see so much negative, wicked magic, fruitless magic basically running around, how to get the girl to fall in love with you, how to get all the money, how to do all this, this kind of, of, of weak magic. It's because of that rated R type mentality and needing to feed on that, okay? So that's why when we talk about this consciousness and we talk about this expansion, we need to bring it relative because you notice how you got one right side or R side and then one L side, right? And this is L and R. And L and R is the difference between Arabic in Hebrew, which of course are the main two warring spiritual factions, right? And then what, what the difference is, is in their one language there's an L and then the R doesn't exist and the other there's an R and the L doesn't exist. And then they had to end up coming to some kind of fusion with the language to create a language that could expand into both cultures. But again, I don't want to get into that now because there's enough of that the next show that I'm going to be getting into, there's going to be the visualizations of what the tetrahedron does when it shines a shadow against the wall and how Hebrew is a cognate of that particular symbol and how many other languages such as Tamil and Sanskrit and different languages, when dropping them down upon themselves, do in fact create symbols. And those little symbols are embedded within most people's mind, and, but just broke it, broken apart. And so the only way they really find their wheels turning again is if somehow they're able to put this riddle or puzzle back together in their mind. Because notice, most people are thinking in the language. We feel in the language. We, uh, we even uh, dream in the language. So if you don't know what the language is really about, then you don't know what the program is really about. And that's another thing, excuse me, that you have to realize that what these physical vehicles are is that let's say for instance this this could be per se a physical vehicle because it is made of physicality and then it's inhabited by a crystal which is the silicone chip inside but notice this when you really think about it there's several processes going on here because there's also a program so you need to understand that you're this soul force and then the soul force goes into the vessel and then once it goes into the vessel it is basically only moving on the instincts of the vessel, firmware, until it gets software, which gives it abilities to do different things. And software for us is language. And so when we load software, we're basically determining what kind of lifestyle that we can live, especially if we're preloading this, saying what kind of culture you want to be born in next, what kind of words are you familiar with next. And then you'll find yourself reincarnating in that sector because, after all, you're the, you're the spacecraft, you're the time machine, so you're going to show up where you send your next projection. So you send your projection into this next lifestyle, speaking this certain language, and the language, along with the color of your skin, which go along with each other in most cases, are going to harmonically phase lock you into a certain kind of culture that you're going to experience as quote unquote new because that is your first time and that's the first time you want to be in that level of division. But when you become omniscient, then you can see it all. And in fact, it all looks like one thing. So rather than being inside of it and dealing with the different pieces of that everything's been cut into, 
all of the division, basically. You start expanding into seeing the big picture of this, you pull out of the huge fractal. And then you also zoom back in because this is the ability that we contain. And notice how in most systems, especially Eastern and Western, one versus the other, they always teach of either leaving or staying. Never going and coming, never always moving, right? They're always talking about how to be on one pole or another pole. So what we're talking about today is we're talking about oscillation. We're talking about taking it up and then bringing it back down. We're talking about being a bridge, a real bodhisattva, a real Mashiach, a real evangel, and being a bridge and actually bringing the level of consciousness to your uh, uh, hood, club, or whatever near you. Meaning that all the lo where the bridges need to be built is the bridges need to be built to the areas that don't have bridges to them. Like, they don't be trying to go, you go to the church, they supposedly have their own bridge, <laughs> which they don't, but if you go to other religious institutions, supposedly they have their own bridge. So doing that kind of work there, you know, it becomes like trying to build a bridge on top of another bridge. That's different kind of work. You need destroyers then. You need Shivas. They come in and destroy bridges so someone else can come and build another bridge that's really, a, or destroy half bridges. And this is what you'll see also, the bridge uh, the use of the bridge symbolism, especially in the, the document I, uh, that's in there, I believe it's the Deceivers Exposed, but you always see that on the book covers and things that they write to the people to deceive them, they always put this bridge there and they have this bridge leading to the sun. Even the Masonic book, A Bridge to the Light, is the same way. So you see this bridge all the time and it's because this bridge thing is a real thing. But unfortunately, the bridges they build don't connect. They get the person all the way into the middle and then almost a quarter of a way through and then you'll be like, whoa, shit, where's the bridge? And then you also realize that you can't turn back. Right? So those are the kind of bridges that need to be destroyed. Those are the bridges to nowhere, if you may. Right? So what we need to do is we need to build bridges so that way we can bring individuals from other states of consciousness that don't have the opportunity to get this kind of message on this kind of level every day. Meaning that this is something that it's a, it's a first time in a tense. Like I was looking for the knowledge, I was looking for the information and see who else was going to bring it out in totality. And so that was my experience in going to different planetary systems to see what was the big holdup. And it is that the only real planetary system truly is right here, that everything is on top of each other. So if you don't see any movements, any actions, and many, any main changes going on here, then that means for a long time out there in the projections there's nothing going on. So that's why we started here, and we started by pulling a lot of our essence back inside of us, getting it from way out there in space and, and with God all in the sky and anything but inside of you, right? And you cut that off. You cut all those tubes feeding into you of pulling your energy and allowing you to hope and dream in something that doesn't even answer back. And you put it back into yourself because you're the one that's talking to you. You're the one that's there with you every time something goes in haywire and then you're in a crazy situation. You're the one mustering up the strength to go on. So if you keep giving away that energy to the bankers, which is basically God, he's basically a banker on just another dimension as the spice must flow, brokering your energy and your prayers and what you want with, uh, from, the, from the petty things that you've been given a choice to have and start really demanding your lot, which is a full-powered vehicle. This means that complete chakra centers turned on and the knowledge of my name, which is the tone and the vibration of perfection that emits from an individual when they're in balance. So before I turn this on, because this is like a maxi today, meaning that this, this uh, last night's conversation is still... Uh, two hours, but it's so imperative for us to all listen to it again. Like I said, I'm going to play, I'm going to play it, but before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show something about this next phase of open source spirituality, okay? And what I'm showing you is, is that I'll tell you the truth, that since I've been doing this for the last five to six years, what's happened is, is that, I mean, it takes a lot to do all of this, like you're constantly studying, you're constantly in meditation, you're constantly taking care of, I have a, a wife and a daughter, and then you're constantly preparing for these shows, which actually take a lot, and you're constantly answering emails, and you're constantly, and some people need to think about, well, how much am I really doing? <laughs> like, instead of being critical all the time, just think about what my workload per se really looks like, and why I have to use every single thing at my disposal in order to serve humanity's expansion, okay? And so, what that's caused, though, is that I have a large amount of information 
What's published is about 10% of it, so, so you can to give you an idea. And all this information is some of the highest levels, or probably the highest level of information that could be available really to us right now as far as expansion. It is the visuals, meaning images, and the textual, meaning books and knowledge in, that, uh, in, written, uh, in the written, fact, in the written uh, form that prove beyond a shadow of a doubt once you have the master key, meaning once you're at where you're at now. See, people, you have the master key before you begin to dive back into any of this stuff because you're going to need discernment to look at it. But after a while, you're going to see that, man, he's right, or it's right, or the whole expansion and the truth is right that all people have really been doing that belong to these cults and factions and religions is actually using the knowledge that comes from our body and comes from the universe and then haven't even been doing a great job at explaining it. And so what this has bred is, is this bred what we know today is all these complex mythologies and creatures and organisms and things and many of which only exist within our mind while we're in a tense divert it from the truth to the matter meaning which that's what you should be studying first if you don't have the truth or the master key when you go into anything even for some jollies it's not it's gonna serve to even throw you off balance and so remember the truth is all itself so I'm just showing this here and this is just the images because it gives you an idea what will become open source because I also do need individuals assistance which you don't have to email me about we're gonna have something major in how we get involved with people to be able to assist us with this but it's basically taking this and beginning to label it because while I was collecting a lot of this information for the past eight years from different places like I would be going into uh, books that you're not gonna see again or books that you're not gonna be able to find again and then what I was doing is I was clipping a lot of the the different kinds of information that was in those books and then I had no choice but to keep moving on because sometimes I will go through a book and the book would have like 200 images that I need to clip all in that night. And so trying to actually label all those images, you'll see you get like this, the Adobe, Adobe Acrobat screen snap, meaning that I can only just have time to screen capture it and then keep moving on. And this has been going on for eight years. Now many of these books I read most of the meat in these books. So when people hear me talking about spirituality and hear me talking about what is really going on, it's not because that all of a sudden I've become very judgmental about just religion and about other people's cultures. It's because I took the time to study and to not just study, but to experience other cultures, but to still, by being empathic, feel that there was something going on that was hindering a lot of the energy that would generally be associated with if you've tapped into this kind of energy, meaning what didn't really make sense to me was this glorious explanation of what spirituality really is, but the lack of use of it in the, in the visualization of it in our physical world, meaning if we can explain how, what it would be like to be expanded, why can't we experience that here on the planet? Is there something else here that is attempting to hold us back from that even besides us? Is there a certain culture, a certain craft, a certain religion, a certain way of life, and a certain way of being that we've adopted somehow in our path of expansion that has been somewhat cyclic for us or meaning not allowing us to progress? Has it been Sir Cole, meaning the actual serpent that pulls the energy away from only the precious things or the cream of things or culling away from the top, the tenth as they call it, the only wanting the chosen part of things, right? Like if the, if the cultures and the religions that, that, uh, that have been made available to us, that we've learned it from that, and thus we've become like that, then that's every single thing that we're going to need to get out of, right? And so who is going to be the one that walks everyone out of this level of mysticism since it involves languages, codes, and craft in which we don't understand at this point because we're dumbed down to English or English. And what it really is, is, is that it's something that one cannot do on their own. It's something that we have to do together. And that's what open source spirituality is really about. It's about us all having to utilize what we know thus far to cipher through all the highest levels of knowledge that have ever been available to man coming across this planet that has been written. So I don't think personally that there's any other annuals or any other documentation that is more rich than our archives at this point beside probably the five mile library underneath the Vatican. 
So what happens here then is, is that the expansion begins and the information instead of some Snowden crap, meaning, and I'm not saying anything negative about Snowden, but I still think it's a massive op, but instead of information that basically only tells you things that you can't do anything about, oh, they're looking at you, they're watching you, all right? there's nothing you can really do about that then unless you just hide under some aluminum foil or something. But the reality is, is that the same thing with the leaks, you know, who's doing bad and who's, who's the one that's corrupt. And I guess for the low uh, level of consciousness and what they need to know to just basically find somebody else to blame, that suffices. But to the other levels of consciousness, because I was talking to some individuals and I said, hey, you know, let me ask you this. In all the information that was sequestered from different systems, was there, did you ever come across any spiritual knowledge or spiritual information? The remark was, we weren't looking for that. <laughs> well, <laughs> come on here. If the only thing that can really expand us is knowledge about ourselves, why are we looking for knowledge about them? <laughs> why wouldn't we be looking for knowledge about what is going on with our physical bodies? What is, why are we even here? Let's start with that. Let's let, let's let that be the main query that we search all databases for is that, hey, why are we here? But of course, that doesn't happen. What generally happens is one attempts to acquire a lot of information that is, allows them to br blame someone else for the reason or the, the, the reason why they have not succeeded or the reason why they failed or basically the whole conspiracy portion of the whole thing, right? Yet many of us now are like, okay, I'm looking for the knowledge. I'm looking for the information that's actually going to give me the real truth about what's going on here and then like what, what's really happening. Am I going to have the opportunity to really expand or is this going to be going on like Groundhog Day, Groundhog's Day like indefinitely? And of course, in the program, that's how it's rigged. As I told you, there was a king who's Khan, who's Cohen, who was the priest, who decided that during its reign that it wanted to make its reign forever. And this is very interesting because if you notice how, how the Zodiac is set up, is the Zodiac is set up that certain beings actually reign during certain time on physical planets because they're the energies that emit during that time like seasons, okay? But what happens if we're only in summertime? And there becomes no spring, there becomes no winter, there becomes no other seasons in a tense to give us some new flavor. And so this is kind of like what's going on with Earth, because Earth is stuck in a time where one particular king decided, well, I want to make all, I want to make this an infinite golden age, which is my color. And from here, the gold gods will rule. As you notice, if you take L away from uh, uh, God, uh, take L away from gold, it says God. Okay, and then you take, uh, so God has an affinity for gold, and you turn God backwards, it means dog. So that means that they probably came from Canaan because they're canine. And then you get into this whole black dog mythology, and basically the sign of the dog, which is basically a domesticated lion when you really look into it, because notice how cats are a mixture between lions and snakes. And this is why their eyes have the visica. But lions have circular eyes like humans. And so the dog with a circular eye, if you chase back Canis's genus, it actually gets into lions. And so this doesn't mean a black man or a white man, but really that they're black and white are derivatives of the lion beings. And that's why even Hala Selassie and all the Rastafari are over there with the lion. But in Britain, they just throw up the lion in your face like it belongs to them. And it's because of a war that has been going on, an inner war within our consciousness that is taking place in the worlds within, known as the chakra or the archonic planes, and that these worlds are the battles of deities attempting to rule over who? you. And so this is how they fight their war. They fight their war by seeing if you're going to adapt their way of being, their laws, their rules, their ethics, their customs, and their dominion over your soul. So what then happens is, is that we get a chance to release ourselves from this kind of vampiric dominion and get into each other, into experiencing who we are, not creating differences based on cultures that came through one time of the zodiac on a dualistic planet and then wanted to iconoclast their entire experience, experience with us by continuously giving us the knowledge and information only about them but not about ourselves and that's why I was saying it doesn't matter then if it's about God if it's about Hercules or if it's about Spider-Man if it's not about you then it's the same play and that's how we have to realize what we're dealing with but of course I've been able to furnish the documentation that allows you to see that that is in this disclo these disclosure statements because it will show you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the individuals that are involved in this 
again, have the creativity to begin to put things together. So you won't even know where, what, what is what. You get some artificial structures here, you get a few artificial books, and then next thing you know, you're bowing down. So this means that you don't have to necessarily figure out who's who and what's what. You just need to figure out who you are. If you're still bowing down, if you're still looking to something else to give you something that you're supposed to be getting yourself, then you're actually tied into the whole vampiric session. Right? So what this progression is about, what we're doing is we're making it open source every single thing that was held back from us, starting with us, <laughs> rather than starting with someone else's story. Starting with the Earth saga first so that we can figure out who's who and what's what and the connections between everything, why people can't see that set was a dog and it was a Setian dog, and from that point that the dog put itself on the ark and that the humans thought that they were going to bring their cone or their offerings to him so that way he can use that same cone as a wedge, as you see in the Sumerian, the wedge to get into our state of consciousness. And this is also what we talked about last night. So again, some didn't hear the conversation from last night. So we're going to replay that conversation. And then next time we have a show, which actually may not be in two weeks, it may be in a month, because I want to make sure all this stuff is together. And what I'm doing right now is I'm starting the first round of sorting this information so that way the others that come in to assist me in doing it can also uh, understand even what's here. But to give you an idea, this is a, a document, this is a database software that is incredible. I am able to, and this is just my images, and I've got them somewhat sorted at this point, and this is not all of them, but it allows me to take my images and put them into a way where I can not only access them rapidly, OCR, anything that has text in it, meaning optical text uh, recognition, allows me to see that that's what this says. So if I'm looking for a minute again, then I'll actually be able to type that in my search bar and actually get that. And so, and this will be done with all of my documentation. It'll be done with all of my books, which have now reached around 20,000 spiritual books only. This is not even, you know, science and all those things. It's just only spiritual books. My documentation has reached that amount. But the imagery to me is worth more because now people become very visual with what they believe to be true, right? And so because of that, then you have to show them visually, look, there's a priestcraft going on here. And the priestcraft has learned this language that they got from the Egyptians. It was one of the things that they actually took. And then from that point, they can actually confine entities into vessels and trap them. They were like fishers of men, if you may, trappers, okay, in the trap, but doing it with souls, okay? And the same thing that the reason why that these same men are over the rap or rape industry is because they work the craft through tones and vibrations and trapping individuals in a certain state of consciousness that repeat themselves over and over and over again. Like somebody can probably repeat the entire song of Drake's first single, but if you ask them where in which they come from and how in which do they get about, they don't know anything. So that is a sure play. And also, if no one is here explaining to you what is actually going on, then this means, like, meaning if somebody's addressing, even the most powerful people in different uh, uh, states of life, i.e. your president, whatever, if they're not getting up and saying, hey, this is exactly what's happening, and this is where you are, this is the world that you're living in, then you're under some level of deception. And that's why these people, and you got to think about it. I asked myself, because the other day I, I was looking at this thing where, uh, I think it was Senator Kerry, he was asked if, he, if they were basically giving weapons to the opposition forces of Syria. I'm just trying to remember what, what was going on because I was mainly just honing into just the whole thing of, of the energy coming across. And because the lady said, because during the speech of Barack Obama, he actually said directly that that's what he was doing. Is that what you're doing, right? And this dude sat back there like this and said, well, I don't know. And she said, no, 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 is that what you're doing? And then he goes, well, I'm not sure because I didn't actually hear the speech. Wait a minute. Why is it that we got to lie all the time? Why can't this man just say, look, we need the oil, we're burning up too much gas, we're very greedy, we need the stuff so you can keep your shit running, and if you don't like it, then go to another country because that's it. Why, why don't they just muscle in and just say, hey, this is what it is and this is why we do what I do, why we do what we do, right? Why don't they say that, right? This is because they are in this part of non-transparency and they wish to remain there. And it doesn't mean that they don't, wouldn't feel confident with just going out and saying that. This just means that they use non-transparency as their tool, as their mode of faction. So 
don't be surprised then, like I said, when you, you're watching these people and they're not giving you the real truth about anything, but yet you keep going to their information and acting like their information is going to authenticate something. This is the kind of information that is going to authenticate something. This is the kind of information that's going to authenticate something. Because it doesn't, it doesn't require me to actually believe in what another person's saying, it just requires me to look and to read and to watch the consistencies. It doesn't require me to actually look at one thing and say, that's exactly the truth. It only requires me to log that and then to look later to when I see that exact same thing on someone else. When I start following the signs and the symbols and then where they lead me through the matrix. And then I start seeing, well shit, this is who is who and what's what. But don't be surprised then. If when you start bringing truth for others who haven't seen the imagery and you're telling them, look, he was really with them. It was like a whole coup. They were all sitting on the couch together when they were writing all the documentations to enslave you. Then they may even try to murder you for even bringing forth such information without clear proofs, right? So that's what the books said. You need clear proofs. And these are clear proofs, my friends. And in fact, we've been delivering this since day one. But now, as I said before, we take it to another level. And then for you to see, let's just go in here just a little bit. And, and let's use the drives in discretion. But if we're noticing here, every book about philosophy is here. <laughs> all of them. They're all here. You see? Everything that was ever written about in the philosophical times is all here, okay? But who wants to read that? It's boring. That's what it was made to be. You, can, you see that they wrote it literally to actually be boring and put the person to sleep, make them think, hey, maybe I don't even want to be smart. Maybe I should just go out and, and get some cows and, and some stuff and get rich because, you know, this whole spiritual thing is obviously for somebody else. Masonic everything they ever wrote. They sell this themselves, so it ain't like this was pilfered from somewhere. They always say, oh my goodness, this is information that he's not supposed to have. No, this is when you're looking long enough, you'll find that they, they want money for everything, so they sell you every single book. There's about 5,000 of them. They dwarf, literally dwarf all other spiritual knowledge. These people wrote so much just to shroud out the truth that they have at least 5,000 publications by themselves. And then you get into current readings, meaning like what I'm looking at right now, which was five years ago, a consistent procession of me, okay, this is, what, this is where we're at now, this is what you need to cover, and then once that's covered, then creating another folder, as you'll see in here, and this is all what will be getting sorted out, sorted out, is creating another folder for the different expansion, right? So this is when I was in this state of mind, looking through all of these books, and this is what I had to read, and this is what I had to cover, and then all of a sudden, probably will pop up yet another folder, and then I'll go even deeper in there, and so the folders are staggered based upon the knowledge that I needed to cover during that period of time and then when I started getting ready to go into the next round of the expansion then I would just remove that knowledge or actually put that knowledge all into one folder and then go on with it. So there we are. So this is what will be open source and what actually what it already is. Some people say, well, you better hurry up and get that stuff out. That's the fear state of mind. Oh my goodness, if it's there, you better hurry because look, it's already in different places where other individuals can just as soon as upload it all and give it to everyone they need it. So don't be worried. But don't be surprised if five billion aeons from now you still see me. <laughs> and it's because that when you are secure within yourself, there is no opponent. You ate them. So, without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to play last night's show. And I recommend that even people who have already listened to it, unless you're just short on time, to go ahead and go through it again so you can feel the transmission and what was coming through and also connect some of the dots because there were certain things that I was talking about directly. And if you take, it, take them literal, then you get only one interpretation. But then if you just stay in that spiritual lofty stance of your consciousness, then it actually unveils something entirely different. It actually gives you more of an introspection. So just remember, anytime that I'm talking about something that you feel is external, Always turn it right back around inside of you and see if you can pinpoint and examine where that's going on in you. And you'll make great progress. 
See, you're out of it now. You're awake. So when you're awake, it's like obvious. You're like, oh my goodness, it's in that too. Oh my goodness, it's in that too. It's in my food. Shit, it's in my hair. Ah, it's in my water. You know, you get like that for a moment because you've been asleep. But when you wake up, you know, you know, like you, you see what I'm saying. So also people who are asleep still, it's right here. <laughs> it's right on their face. If you're trying to tell them to see their fingerprint, they can't actually see it. It's too close to them, right? And so this is why once that phase starts, which is a spell, that's what a spell is, okay? That's what spelling in language does, okay? So once they put people under the spell, then the person is so inundated with basically trying to figure out and trying to do all this stuff that has nothing to do with truth, right? Think about it. Like, this is a major thing. Then the person is under the spell. So even the obvious, like, this doesn't make any sense. If God says he's the, uh, the author of confusion, but then two books later, later says, Let's, let us go down and confuse them, something is an issue. Not to mention if God says that he hates evil, but then God says good and evil, I do both of these. This either means God hates himself or somebody mistranslated it. Not to mention if they say curses anyone who hangeth upon a tree, then turn around and crucify the great only son on a tree, something's wrong. And then after all, if Abraham, as far as an entity that is roaming around the Old Testament, 6,000 years ago, becomes connected to another being named Brahma, basically the same cognate name that was running around another book 20,000 years ago, not only may, may, may there be a connection, but if the wife's name was Sarah, and then the other one's wife was named is Sarah Swati, maybe there's some kind of connection between these two books. But will they say it is? Huh? That's the whole thing, because even if there is, even if there isn't, it's only going to make a difference to if the person says it is or it isn't. If someone says, oh, no, yeah, it contains some of the components, but we updated it. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, oh, this is ours. This is what we created. This is what belongs to us. Okay, so that's what's going on. So if the seven chakras in your body become the seven churches in Revelation, then... You can be completely confused about what is being brought forth because they would then be connecting ancient knowledge to modern knowledge that is slightly incorrect. And if you understand, Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans understood how to create a slight imperfection within perfection. And this is how they used to work with secrets. That's all they did. They say, we need to test you to see if you can hold certain secrets, because if not, then we can't tell you certain things. So anyone who is operating in secret is working for the serpent. That's how it works. So, because the serpent is not transparent, the serpent has that sheath. It shuts and closes everything that it goes around and does not reveal what is inside. It only reveals its scaly hide. So, anyway. Let's do this. Let's do this. You know, I, I love being with you, so I'm like ready to go into the show, but again, we just definitely have to do the recap in the last night because I've already like come to that decision inside of myself because it was so potent and like I said it even it moved me in various ways and I wanted to say because I know he's listening thanks a lot to Mr. Lokesh Baba for being there to, to uh, be that conduit of transmitting that information there's just been a massive connection going on and we've been running into all the individuals that are a part of the family as we say family is frequency and that's just been amazing and then also I wanted to say special thanks to all the individuals that are out there that have been pushing for us and really been assisting us that's Luis, that's Jason, that's Dave, that's Keyshawn, that's I don't even want to start giving these names right because what do I really want to do I want to sit back in a whole percussion together in, in the whole or, or, uh, uh, orchestra together and us all just play because have you ever noticed somebody trying to talk over the music <laughs> and like the song you like the song but this dude's like oh this is my favorite part this is my favorite part okay watch this it's gonna go dun 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 yeah and then you're like man would you just shut up I'm trying to hear the song and so that's really what it's like now with when people connect we just play a song together it's not so much as conversation and talk 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 or like they say talking like DJ Clue over the beats it's not going to be like that. It's going to be where individuals are harmonically entwined with each other doing their gift. And that's what's going to get us, you know, all these long lifespan, all these long timelines for when we need to replenish the earth and clean up the ocean. Spirit tech, baby, meaning that I throw something down, boom, it starts raining in the desert. Like I told you, we have that ability. The books will show you. Look, we'll go one more time. These are the real compendium. You can go get these books yourself. You don't got to wait on me. 
But what this was really about was what was pulled out of the Upanishads, the Upanishads, and what was pulled out of those books that they say was about the real energy, okay? You got to weed through this stuff very carefully because it's very similar to being looking at spirituality from a scientific perspective. But if that's your thing, then you actually see within this book the different levels of energies that were identified and what those energies could do. This is the real compendium. It's, again, it's a stickler for detail. I even had took a great deal of time actually going through it because it is that kind of work. And not only that, the writing is also a little, um, a little blurry or, uh, you know, it's just a regular typeface. So, but I ingested it, so I understand the powers that are within the earth and the different variation in the degrees of power because why? I study power, not to power over and master over everyone else. Come on, isn't that what everyone else is doing? Spending all of their energy and spending all their time and everything just trying to master over everything else, yet forgetting about themselves, <laughs> right? Because then when you apply it to yourself and you put it inside of yourself, that's when it starts becoming useful for everyone else because then it's loaded. Before, it's just sitting there. It's like a disc sitting on the table. You haven't put it in the computer yet. If you don't put the disc of the DVD or uh, the flying saucer inside of you rather than having it run around, oh, David, which is DVD. Oh, David, he's in the sky, the son of David, blah, blah, blah. If that David or Dravid, which is a Dravidian, is not inside of you and becomes some flying saucer flying through the sky, then you can see where your power is. It's out there. It's not with you. It's, in, it's been sequestered by something else. You've been mined. Your jewels have been uh, 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 plundered, right? So think about that. And think about also that this expansion is about getting yours back, okay? So remember, really move the man out of this and put the mission in play and start seeing, well, if he goes on with it or not, I'm going on with it. I'm, I'm going to triumph with this expansion because it's for my children, it's for my biorhythm, it's for my creed. It's so that when I expand that I don't have these other crazy memories about my failure. It's all because that I am purpose, not need purpose, that I'm already acting, that the most toughest thing was life. And you were already living and you were already experiencing. They were always throwing casting spells and there was witches and warlocks running around throwing curses on you and cursing at you. And even your own people started attacking you. What greater story? <laughs> like imagine yourself on the, uh, on the expansive dimension explaining in the, in the ultra encrypted language for a moment just your experience in the universe or university and what you learned there on that craft that had spells and curses and, and oaths and pacts, bindings, bonds and rituals where everyone was linking themselves together but not in a balanced way. They were either doing it in a negative way or what they called a positive way. And what they really discovered during that time was the balance between the two. Like Dynamo Jack said, I take <laughs> the two energies and the ones that are separate and I mash them together. Right. And this is a real master. You set something, set something on fire with the hand. OK, that's how you know someone's in charge of their systems. He said they say, well, how is it done? Meditation every day. Meditation every day. Meditation every day is not just sitting down in full lotus thinking of nothing. It's being able to be in the zone state of your mind constantly. Whether you're putting together some complex organism or just sitting in the bed at night ready to lay it down for the evening and prepping yourself for, for, uh, for takeoff. Uh, uh, calculating your parallaxes and things and getting ready for your projection. Okay, So that's what real meditation every day is. It's the meditation of life. It's self-worship per se, meaning actually being conscious of every breath that you're taking because you're that concerned. Like you're actually looking at what you're putting in your mouth because that you're that concerned. It has to do with you. You're not sitting in front of a TV feeding yourself Cheetos and looking at the TV, you know, and you don't even care what you're putting in your mouth. You're just more care about what's on the TV and, 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 and whether uh, Shakira is going to shake it the other way again. That's the reality that we're actually dealing with right now. So this is what also will be what we're waking up from. See, like there's a great level of interchangeability between what we're experiencing and what's going on because what happens is that this is what we get to accredit as, oh, I graduated from that, so you need this. Don't be trying to get rid of it, destroy it, bury it somewhere. It is your foundation. Perfect it, pack it, meaning pack it down tight, settle yourself, settle. That's the key word because the foundation needs to be settled, right? So settle yourself. Get all of the things that you need to get settled. 
all of the currents and balances and things that you need to get checked. Get those all that checked and get ready to settle yourself. And then that is your launch pad. Only. That's the only purpose it really serves at a certain point. It's your launch pad. But remember, because this shuttle that's taken off has got so much thrust, it needs a firm launch pad. You just destroy the launch pad. Have you ever seen how much thrust comes out of one of those just man-made rockets when they're about to take off? If the launch pad wasn't solid, it would disintegrate. And then the rocket would just fly off probably fly off in the direction of the people and kill them too. So remember, your foundation and your experiences here on earth are very important to you being able to launch off properly to have the foundation of knowing where you're going because you know where you came from. And that's all I have to say. <laughs>